Voices Voix brings together Canadians who are concerned by efforts of the federal government to silence those who oppose its policies. We have documented over 80 such cases. Whistleblowers who try to speak out are silenced. Here's one story. The department in which I worked was subject to some uh, obligations uh, under law. Parliament had passed some provisions that required the Minister of Justice and the Deputy Minister of Justice to examine proposed legislation for conformity with the Charter. And uh, what they were doing was not asking themselves the question of whether the proposed legislation was consistent with the Charter, but whether it had a faint hope of being consistent with the Charter. Such a low standard of review, I think, deprives Parliament of the information it needs to make law in an informed way. Well, after having taken the issue to the Deputy Minister unsuccessfully, and then uh, uh, also raising it with the Public Service Integrity Commissioner, also unsuccessfully, I then commenced an action in the federal court asking the court to declare what the duties of the Minister of Justice were uh, and to clarify these duties. Well, the day after I filed the claim, I was suspended without pay. Uh, that continued for some months, though eventually I retained a lawyer to help me with the employment issues and eventually the department uh, uh, and I came to a settlement in which I was not disciplined, but I did take retirement. So I retired earlier than I would like to, and I think there are also practical consequences sometimes. Uh, for example, uh, it's rather difficult now for me to ask uh, my former managers for references if I look for new employment. Uh, and while I chuckle as I say that, it's actually a fairly significant impediment. It may or may not affect my reputation uh, as, a, as a lawyer. I think there are some lawyers who feel that the stand I took and the position that I'm taking is in fact uh, creditable and, uh, and does not detract from my reputation, but there are others who might feel it does. I think there are really two aspects of my situation that should concern Canadians. The first is the substance itself. Uh, uh, the state and state actors ought to act in ways that they themselves in good faith believe are consistent with the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Uh, I think anything short of that is falling short of their duty to citizens. Uh, so the first thing is that uh, no government should be proposing legislation that it itself believes is likely or almost certainly inconsistent with the Charter. Then the second thing that I, I think uh, Canadians should be concerned about, I think the current legislation we have and the current way of approaching whistleblowing is inadequate. It did not protect me. It was utterly ineffective. Uh, in my case, the Public Service Integrity Commissioner considered that this was not important enough to investigate. Uh, and there's another issue that uh, I think the Public Sector Integrity Commissioner legitimately raised, which was that some of the information might not be accessible to him because the Department of Justice would have claimed solicitor-client privilege over it. And that's a problem that Parliament needs to address in the uh, whistleblower legislation, to say that the Public Service Integrity Commissioner should not be barred from seeing any state document uh, in investigating allegations of wrongdoing. <laughs>